Hey everyone, and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons for another Buy Request Song Tutorial. Today I'm sharing with you a fantastic beginner level guitar song in Bob Marley's 1972 classic, Stir It Up. Now I'm going to show it to you in two different forms, in bar chord form and also open position form for the super beginners out there. Now this is just three chords, A major, D major, and E major, so we're going to put most of our focus into just getting down some basic reggae technique. I got all the tabs available for you at patreon.com slash swiftlessons, where if you support the channel for just a dollar a month, you can gain access to tabs for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now, let's get started with your lesson. One, two, one, two, three, four. Darling, steer it up Come on, baby Come on and steer it up Little darling, steer it up Oh, it's been a long, long time Since I got you on my mind Oh, now you are here, I say it's so clear To see what we could do, baby Just me and you, come on and steer it up Little darling, steer it up Come on, baby Come on and steer it up Little darling, steer it up Oh I'll push the wound And I'll blaze your fire Then I'll satisfy your heart's desire Said i steer it together Every minute And all you've got to do, baby Keep it in, in, steer it up Little darling, steer it up Come on baby, come on and steer it up Little darling, steer it up Oh, quench me when I'm thirsty Come on and cool me down, baby When I'm hot Your recipe is darling It's so tasty When you show And stir your pot Come on, steer it up Little darling, steer it up Come on, baby Come on and steer it up Little darling, steer it up Oh Okay, close look at the fretboard and also my pick in hand. We're in standard tuning, key of A, getting started with our intro riff. It's gonna sound like this. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Okay, and real slow. Okay, so breaking that down nice and slow, it begins with two measures of the A major chord, over which we play. All right, nice and simple line for the A chord. Fifth fret, low E string, that's an A note. To the C sharp, fourth fret of the A string. C sharp again, then go up to D. Then back to C sharp. All right, so five, four, four, five, four. That gets us to the D chord over which we play. A string four going up to five. Fourth fret of the D string, F sharp. And then the pinky stretching over to the seventh fret, A. All right, now the A chord to the D chord. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're gonna play a similar line over one measure of E major. Sounds like this. All right, so A string, five to seven. Then six on the uh, D string. And four on the G string. All right, one more time. Okay, you put all three parts together. The A chord. The D chord. The E chord. For that intro bass riff. Okay, fantastic. We have that iconic intro bass line down, the perfect way to kick off this tune for solo performance. Now we're jumping into the rhythm side of things. Now I'm gonna show you how to play this chord progression in a few different ways. Uh, for the beginners out there, I want you to know that this chord progression, A major, D major, and E major, is what musicians call a one, four, five progression in the key of A. That means if I look at my A major scale, check to see what notes I have in the first scale degree, the fourth scale degree, and the fifth scale degree. I'll have A, D, and E. All right, that tells the bass player what to play. It also tells the uh, guitar players to play an A major, a D major, and an E major chord. Okay, so all the beginners out there, you're gonna play these chords in the open position for ease of learning. We'll have the A chord for eight beats. All right, for this chord, your middle finger is on the second fret of the D string. I really prefer this position. The ring finger beneath that, and the pinky beneath that, that's the second fret G string, second fret of the B string. Strumming from the A string down. All right, then the D chord, peace sign to the triangle. Nice mnemonic device. Pointer finger uh, is on the G string, second fret. Middle finger is on the second fret of the high E string. And the ring finger is arched on the third fret of the B string. Fingers against the edges. All right, strumming from the D string down. So that's for one measure. Then the E major chord for a measure. My middle finger is on the second fret of the A, ring finger beneath that second fret of the D string, and my pointer finger is on the first fret G. If you apply those beats to it, we have eight beats on the A chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we have the D chord for one measure. One, two, three, four. And the E chord, one, two, three, four. Stir it up. Little darling, stir it up. It's the simplest way to play the tune. Little darling, stir it up. You play that way all the way through the tune. All right, now, the beginners, you're just gonna hold that down. Uh, if you're more advanced, we can jump into the bar chord shapes. Okay, jumping into our bar chord positions for the more advanced players out there. We're gonna have our A chord on the fifth fret. All right, this is kind of like an E-shaped position. Bar in the fifth fret, I have my ring finger on the seventh fret of the A string, the pinky beneath that seventh fret D string, middle finger, sixth fret of the G. This is every single major chord in the book. Okay, just moving fret to fret. All right, next, after we have eight beats of this A chord, we'll have four beats of the D chord shape. Just bar the fifth fret, and use your ring finger to bar the D, G, and the B string. If the high E string is muted, that's fine. It's not gonna make too much of a difference, okay? But some people's hand shape does allow them to get the A note on the high E string in this position. All right, so far you have the A chord, the D chord, and if you want to turn this into an E chord, it's a very easy transition. Just take it up a whole step. All right, now we have stir it up. Little darling. You can strum down. Stir it up. All right. Little darling. It's been a long time. I've got you on my mind. Just like that. 
So if you're kind of a, a beginner guitarist, um, you're just getting into your bar chords, just keep it nice and simple, just work on your downstrokes. Then when you're ready, you feel like you have those transitions down, you can get into the next segment, which is going to be all about reggae style rhythm. All right, great work everybody. You have that intro bass line down and you have your chord forms in the open position and then also the barred positions. Now we're jumping into a little bit of rhythm. First, let's talk about what's at the core of reggae rhythm, which is basically just downstrokes, nice and short staccato downstrokes on beats two and four. So if we're playing to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, the best way to emulate that really classic reggae sound is just to strum like this. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can do that on the D chord too. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice how my hand is covering up the strings when I want the tones to kind of stop. So I'm keeping them nice and staccato. Here's that scene technique nice and slow. Watch my hand kind of come up off the strings. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm using my thumb to cover up the low E string and every single time I strum, I hear the tones and then I relieve the pressure. On the D chord, the same exact thing. A one, two, three, four. The E chord, one, two, three, four. You put all that together, we have nice and slow. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can play that way all the way through this tune. It's very authentic. Now, um, it's gonna sound even better with the bar chord forms. So if you're playing with the bars, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's been a long time since I got you on my mind. Nice and simple. All right, so that's the kind of typical uh, reggae rhythm, just hitting those twos and fours nice and short. Now, if you wanna play by yourself acoustic guitar and you wanna kind of jazz that up a little bit, you can play something a little bit more percussive. Okay, so now let's get a more percussive version of what we just learned, starting with the open positions. It's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. Real slow. All right, nice and chunky. So this is kind of just an acoustic guitar kind of solo interpretation of the entire reggae rhythm, okay, which has a lot of stuff kind of going on in it. So if you take the A chord and you cover up the strings nice and tight, so nothing's kind of, um, nothing's being voiced, you have all this ability to kind of put some scrapes in there for a percussive nature to your strumming pattern. So on the one beat, we're gonna play one and then on the second beat, two, end. So that was dead, dead, live, dead. All right, then you need to repeat that again for beats three and four. All right, so dead, dead, live, dead, 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 live, dead. You do that twice for the A chord, then on the D chord, and the E chord. So that is your percussive reggae strum over A major, D major, and E major in its open positions. Now let's take a look at it with the bar chord shapes. Okay, great, now we have two of the most common and most used rhythm techniques for reggae rhythm guitar. Now we can apply those uh, percussive elements to our bar chord shapes. And it's gonna sound great because we're covering up all the strings, which means we can get a little bit more expressive with the percussive elements. And it can also get a little bit shorter with the voice notes. All right, so it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. Okay. 
Okay, so there you have it, my recommended rhythm pattern for jamming through this entire song in a solo acoustic performance setting. If I was playing with a full band, I probably wouldn't be this busy. I'd either just stick with those nice tight down strokes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or I could be even more simplistic and just play muted strokes like what Bob did on his track in the original recording. Okay, so Bob's basic approach is just to put in a little bit of chirpy, percussive notes into the mix. He's using the guitar strictly as a percussion instrument. To do this, he holds the chord, but he doesn't give it pressure so that the chord doesn't voice. It's gonna be muted strums. Down and up on beats two and four. The fingers hovering above the strings gives it a little bit of a harmonic sound. And that sound is going to change as he moves from chord to chord. So over the A chord, Over the D chord, over the E chord. All right, so you can still hear the chord change just a little bit. At full speed, a one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Okay, a little bit more of a, um, uh, certainly an electric guitar technique, but it sounds good on the acoustic guitar as well. All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on Bob Marley's Stir It Up. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Hope you're enjoying the extra resources. I got many more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.